Okay, I just without any further ado, I, I'm an agricultural engineer and I work for, agri um, I'm, I'm the head of the GIS unit in the Environmental Stewardship Division at Alberta Agriculture and Rural Development out of Edmonton. And I have 20 years experience in GIS and related applications in agriculture. Um, I'm the custodian for the digital soils information in Alberta and I've been the project manager on the original uh, Alberta Soil Information Viewer and the redeveloped one that I'm going to present the functionality for today. So why, why do we have this new look viewer? Like why, why did we have that? Well one of the reasons we have it is that it seems to be an immensely popular thing with with our clients and uh, what we have here is a bar chart that I did some some basically the number of visits that come to the rope in the website is is the entirety of the circle um, the blue is other Alberta agriculture and rural development content we have a an agri um, agriclimatic information service that's the red and then the the um, Alberta soil information viewer is, is the green area so it, it you know it's about a third of the visits that come to our site on a monthly basis so uh, so another reason that that we do this we wanted to improve the experience for user experience uh, the underlying technology was forcing us to upgrade the soil viewer and while we were doing that we uh, thought we'd add a few a little bit more functionality something that we tried to do in the first one but it didn't quite work out and we we managed to get there second go round yeah so the the underlying technology uh, needed some upgrading and again we, we get about 2600 visits uh, on in an average month sometimes it's more sometimes it's less but that's it's been going about a year and that's that's kind of the number of visits we get on a monthly basis um, some of our clients okay so the project was to redevelop and then you know our clients are farmers ranchers custodian uh, or custom operators fertilizer dealers soil consultants environmental consultants government and non-profit research organizations, educators. These are the kind of people that phoned me from the first one. These are the kind of uh, calls I got. Crop insurance, a lot of crop insurance, a lot of, lot of the uh, agri um, Agriculture Financial Services Corporation. They, they use it heavily on an almost on a daily basis. Uh, realtors use it quite a bit. Um, land developers, solicitors, utility and resource extraction companies. Anybody that needs to do a phase one assessment or environmental assessment or uh, to be started, the, the soil information viewer works on a browser. We're connected live th through um, uh, a virtual connection. And uh, basically, if, if you want to get to the soil viewer, everybody got a pamphlet, right? And right on the, right on the, uh, Right at the bottom there, there's a, a link. And you just type that, no www's or anything, just type soilinformation.alberta.ca and that will take you to the welcome page. All right, and so maybe we'll, we'll do that. I'll just show that. So, I'll just start right over. So yeah, so you just type in here, oh, looks like I've got it, uh, maybe I won't show it. Take my word for it, it works. <laughs> okay, but um, this is the welcome page that you see. Uh, just to go through uh, the presentation, we're going to start with the uh, getting started. Um, getting started is, is the first in a series of six tip sheets. And uh, basically, it just shows you how to get on to the soil information viewer. And it also gives you some, some ideas about what the different widgets and icons are. And, and we do that through this first link, Navigation and function, Functions Help. 
All right, and in there, that uh, takes us to another page that tells us about all the different mechanisms for navigating and doing things in the viewer. The first one for navigation has to do is this wand, and it'll be on the left-hand side of the of the screen in 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 the application itself. Uh, the very top here, this very top, allows you to do some panning up and down and sideways, as well as this this globe here, which which uh, allows you to zoom out to it to the maximum extent. Uh, these two buttons here um, allow you to zoom to the previous zoom or zoom to the next uh, predetermined setting on, on this, on this uh, lever here. This lever is sort of a, a scrolling to different zoom, predetermined zoom um, scales. Uh, this hand here is, is your, your standard uh, panning tool. Uh, and then we have a plus and a minus button. And the plus button allows you to zoom out so that you, so that you see more of the map, but at less resolution. And the, the minus sign gives you less of the map, but at greater resolution. And then we have um, other buttons that, that I will go into in more detail in, in various uh, other parts of the tip sheets. Uh, and, and I will make a, an effort to explain what the latitude longitude button is, plus this, this zoom button here, the graphical layers, and, and the base map buttons are for. But all the rest will be covered in, in subsequent tip sheets. Okay, so that's about navigation in the getting started. Um, if we want to go to the viewer itself, we, we use this, this link here, the online soil viewer. All right, and so if we click on the online soil viewer, that takes us to the, the Alberta soil information viewer proper. There's a lot of boiler plating here, and so this maximize the view link here gets rid of that um, boiler plating and gives you more effective uh, use of your screen. Uh, there's, there's a welcome flash page here. Uh, some key things to note if you need to get back to the Alberta uh, Soil Information Center where you want to download Agricid. This is a link that will get you back to that. Uh, then there's the Alberta Soil Information Viewer so you can get back to the welcome page with this link if you need to or you can just click to continue. All right. Um, one other uh, one other URL that's worth mentioning is this About button. This About button, uh, you know, it, it's like in Windows, you have your help and then, and then there's About the application. Well, this sort of describes in, in very general terms what the application is supposed to do. Uh, and then this, this link here uh, takes you to a more detailed description and it gives you links to um, other very useful sites um, like the how to download the Canada Alberta Sustainable Agriculture CASA Soil Inventory Procedures Manual. This was the manual that uh, was used to put together the AgriCid data, the digital soils data uh, that's used in the viewer. Uh, then there's the Canadian System of Soil Classification, third edition. A fairly standard uh, soil soil classification uh, textbook that most uh, Canadian soil scientists will be familiar with from their introductory to soils. Um, then there's the Alberta Soil Information Center link again, as well as uh, links to scanned copies of all the uh, soil survey reports uh, in Alberta. So. In places where, so we'll just maybe go to that one quickly here. Um, what it is, is is a listing of all the Alberta soil survey reports that have been done since the 1920s up until about the, uh, the mid-1980s. So just, you know, 60 or 70 years of uh, soil 
uh, survey report information is summed up uh, on this page and can be downloaded. Uh, the reports can be downloaded as well as the, the maps in a, in a digital, usually a, an Adobe Reader format. So, so if you can't find the soils information in, in, the, in the viewer because it's, that information is only available for the agricultural regions of Alberta, you can still get at soils information for the green area through the soil survey reports. Okay, so that. Um, so the next section we'll, we'll do is, is the find your farm section. So again, we open this, the soil information viewer by clicking on, on the map or by clink, clicking the link above. Uh, the flash page comes up and we click to continue. Here's your navigational bar that we were talking about. Um, the graphical layers. We're going we're gonna to talk about these a little bit more, but, but there's a lot of uh, graphical work you can do on here and you can turn some of it on or off or you can purge it or you can um, go to it or, or whatever, right? So this gives you a bit of uh, control over some of those markups and buffers and, and things. It's, it's kind of like a control area. The base maps are over here, so you've got topo, you've got imagery, you've got imagery with labels, you've got a street map, topographic map, okay? And that's what you're seeing under here, right? If, if I, I'm we're in the background, not in, not in, we have this soil information and, and all other layers that, that are part of the viewer itself. They're, they're situated here and they're scale dependent, and so these are the different layers that uh, we've added t to the application itself. These these other these other base maps come standard, okay? And so just by changing it, you get imagery, you know, um, different sorts of things. You know, elevation starts showing up in this one. You got the National Geographic one. Sometimes, you know, it, it has some interesting things. So it's just different visual cues for you to to have. Okay, so that's pretty much the getting started group, right? So that's the first tip sheet. That's what that's all about. So if we move on to the find your farm, because that'll be our next step here. Uh, and what I found in, in, this, in this application with, with the finding your farm is that being able to locate uh, the area of interest is, is very important to people and we've given them three different ways to do that. Uh, the most common way uh, that we've, we've done it is, is by, by, town, by a township lookup, right? So to give an example of that, w we have this, uh, this button here called the Zoom to Township widget, okay? And when you click on that, you get this window called Zoom to Township. And then you d it's as simple as pulling, uh, clicking the arrow on the Township Range and Meridian and then selecting the, uh, the Township Range and Meridian that you want. So I'm going to select 52 here. And then Range 15, so just pull that down. And then west of four, it looks like a sin. And, and one, one thing about this, I'll just say that if you have an incorrect legal, um, you run out of options towards the end because, you know, the, the, if, if it's not in west of five, if your township and range aren't in west of five, west of five won't show up as an option at the bottom. So that it's sort of a, a way to check your legals or a self-correcting way to check it. So after you've got all this information in there, you just hit the lo locate button. What it does is it zooms you to the, to the township. It highlights it in red. When you click off that, the red goes away. And then as you zoom in a bit farther, the sections start to show up and, and, and they're labeled. And so you can very, very easily go from, uh, you know, one through six, seven through 12, I think it is, and then 13 through 
whatever, and, and find, find the rest of your legal fairly quickly, right? So that's one way to look at, um, to locate yourself uh, quickly. The next one I'm going to talk about is this uh, latitude and longitude coordinate. And um, again, I, it doesn't show up very clearly here, but um, any, anybody got a favorite latitude and longitude coordinate that they'd just love to see? <laughs> no? All right. Well, I'll make up one then. So 54 and, and let's try uh, minus 111. And then, oh, I hit the, the enter button. It didn't work. But if I hit this zoom to icon here, it goes to that area. And, and what happens is, is that latitude and longitude coordinate is at the center of, of your view screen. So, and you'll notice at the bottom here, we've got a latitude and longitude. It changes as you move your cursor around. The scale changes a bit because it's, um, all the data is in a, is in a um, geographic projection, so latitude and longitude coordinates. So as you go east or west from, from the central part, the scale changes a bit because it's, the distortion changes or whatever. That's, that's what the programmers told me. So um, yeah, so in the center, uh, yeah, we're at about 54.978, and we're at about um, minus 111.04. So, you know, it, it's, it's fairly close, right? So that's the second way to uh, locate yourself. And then the, the last way has to do with this, this bookmark tools. What we've, what we've loaded in here is a list of all of the 2012 county names. So, uh, you know, if we go to we want to zoom to Calgary. Well, then it takes us right to Calgary, right? And then we can start zooming in from, from the Calgary region. Or if we wanted to go to Clear Hills County, and then it just takes us over to Clear Hills County. You know, or you have another site that's, uh, you know, in Laclabish County, right? And it'll take you to Laclabish County. Or, and then you've got someone over in Kananaskis ID, right? Uh, yeah. And that's all I'll talk about for now. We're going we're gonna to go into adding a bookmark a, li a little later. Okay, but that is basically finding your farm. That's how you find your farm is with those, those three, three widgets there. So again, latitude, longitude, um, zoom to township, and your bookmarks. Okay.